romantic love, hearts and flowers. There's only one person out there for me. Come on, you know how many people there are out there? Odds are there's always going to be someone who's a better match for you than the person you end up marrying. So, based on your theory, there's someone out there better for me than Emma. Oh, no, I'm not touching that one. Wait a second. You don't think I really love her? <sighs> I think you love what she represents. Which is? Come on, Dante. She was the girl who wouldn't give you the time of day back in high school. And years later, after she's played the field and realized how unsatisfying the so-called hotties are, she's finally gone with someone who looks... Oh, my God, you're going to say fugly, aren't you? Unconventional! Uh, nice backpedal. Thank you. That's a clip from the upcoming film Clerks 2, of course, the sequel to the 1994 comedy hit Clerks, written and directed by Kevin Smith. A short time ago, Barry sat down with director Smith to talk about the film and his role in creating a new Superman. And Barry even got a chance to pick his brain about Boston native Ben Affleck. One of the things you say on your website in, in your sort of diary is that uh, I should never, I should stick to making movies under $10 million. Yes. But then you tell these great stories uh -huh. about when you were going to write the script for Superman 5. Right. And you walk, you, you really visited the bizarro world. Yeah, totally. Uh, the new one that's just coming out, does it have the giant fighter spy, uh, spider fight at the end of the movie? No, from what I understand, no giant spider in the current Superman flick. And, and it, good for Brian Singer. Like, I was working, you know, I was never going to direct that movie. It was just a writing gig. But um, I had parameters kind of placed on me from the, from the jump. They wanted to do the Superman, uh, Superman, Death of Superman storyline from the comics where Doomsday shows up and beats the crap out of him and kills him, and then he comes back to life later on. Uh, they wanted him to Why not be in that. Why does Superman come back to life? I, I, because it doesn't take, you know, a genius to figure out that Superman is a, a messianic figure, very Jesus-like, um, Christ-like, if you will. They wanted me to do that storyline. They wanted to do uh, a Superman that didn't wear that suit because John Peters, the producer, said it was too... Which I thought it was hysterical because, you know, that's Superman. That's the suit. And it's like, what, Maggie? Um, they also said that uh, they didn't want... Uh, John Peters, particularly, the producer, didn't want to see him fly because he didn't believe in flying. He said that it was just looks fake to me, and he wanted him to fight a giant spider in the third act. So, you know, I tried to do as best I could working within that very small box, but Brian Singer with Superman Returns, he didn't have those restrictions placed on him. He got to tell the exact story he wanted to take, and I think the movie's probably all the better for it. When you're sitting there, uh, and, and you're a, a, a dyed-in-the-wool comic book fan, you've got your own comic book store. Yes, right? two of them. And, oh, two of them in, in Jersey. Uh, one in Jersey Jer and one in Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. Uh, and you're sitting there talking to this guy, uh, John Peters in mm -hmm. Hollywood, that's telling you in the Superman story, Superman's not going to fly, can't wear the Superman suit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're thinking, so what is he, just like really strong man? Yeah. Really strong guy? Uh, totally. At the same point I was working on Superman at Warner Brothers, and this was back in 96. So Ten years ago, I'm still talking about this Superman movie. Uh, they were working on a Wonder Woman flick, too. And I said, well, what's that like? And they said, uh, she doesn't wear the suit. And she uh, comes from the Amazon, and we're thinking about making her black, and really it's about, it's kind of like Splash. And I'm like, well, why call it Wonder Woman? <laughs> why not just call it Black Chick, you know, that comes to the city or black something splash. like that? Totally. Why not? It, it, you know, they just like the idea of the name brand recognition. Ten years ago, now today, comic book movies have proven to be successful, like after Spider-Man and the X-Men franchise. And so now they're willing to actually hone closer to the comic books. But ten years ago, they wanted to get them all out of the suits and whatnot. And hide the fact that they were comic book characters because Batman and Robin had done so poorly. When you look at the way that world works, because one of the things that's very interesting when they were talking to you about uh, finding a script for Superman 5 is they needed to have the plot and the stories and the characters to some degree fit their needs to come up with good toys to mm -hmm. merchandise. When you look at that world versus what other people probably think is the sort of crazy world of clerks and clerks too, mm -hmm. do you think, you can, one, the other one is crazy in spades, we're just a little colorful. Right, yeah, in terms of um, the machine, the big budget movie making machine, um, it is a little odd because they get ahead of themselves in many ways. Because it's never, they're never just making a movie. They're, they're making an entire franchise which includes licensing and market, marketing opportunities. Like I was attached to do a Green Hornet, a big screen uh, treatment about two years ago. And I remember I signed on to do it, and at one point we had a meeting where they brought out the marketing materials, which were...